Across Afghanistan, women are vanishing, both literally and figuratively. In Kabul this week, images on storefronts painted over or defaced. A chilling and perhaps symbolic sign of the Taliban's desire to roll back two decades of gains. In an extraordinary press conference earlier this week, the Taliban insisted it would allow free media and jobs for women. But that promise already ringing hollow. This Afghan news presenter told she is no longer allowed to work. With the courage that I had in me, I went to the office, but the Taliban told me the regime has changed, you're not allowed to work, go home. Her life, she says, now in danger. Kabul-based journalist Farida, who does not wish to reveal her full identity, spoke to SBS this evening. The longtime champion of press freedom and women's rights says female journalists across Afghanistan are now living in fear. You work hard, suddenly uh, take you back uh, 20 years back. And we all uh, worried and concerned our, our safety because uh, there is no any legal system. Now who, who will hear us? Earlier this week, a female presenter interviewed a Taliban official on Afghanistan's largest private broadcaster, Tolo News. Such a display unthinkable during the Taliban's previous reign. The head of the organisation says his female reporters have been able to continue to work but he warns it's still early days. I wouldn't get too excited. It's it's only been like, you know, 72 hours. I mean, since they <laughs> took over the take over took over the city, and it's just their 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 senior officials are just arriving in Kabul, you know, like now. Germany's Deutsche Welle today revealing the Taliban turned up at the home of one of their Afghan reporters and shot a relative dead when they found out the journalist had been evacuated to Germany. The company's director called the killing inconceivably tragic, adding it is evident that the Taliban are already carrying out organised searches for journalists. Deutsche Welle says militants have also raided the homes of at least another three of its Afghan contributors. Abby O'Brien, SBS World News. Lynn O'Donnell is an Australian journalist who's reported from Afghanistan for more than a decade. She left Kabul just in time as the Taliban breached the city gates and spoke to me earlier from the Netherlands. I was on the last commercial flight to leave Kabul on Sunday morning, just a couple of hours before the Taliban came into the city. But um, on, the, um, on the Saturday, I had people from the National Security Council come to my home and telling me, everybody's left, I've got to get out. There was an, an immediate sense of panic over that weekend. And um, after my uh, uh, plane was wheels up, uh, just after after nine o'clock on Sunday morning, um, the Taliban who were at the gates um, came in. They said they wouldn't come into the city, but they're liars, so they did. Um, they came in armed and uh, closed the airport to gunshots and screams, and we've seen what has ensued since. Then you've written for a long time on Afghanistan, more recently about the peace process and the way that women have been kind of squeezed out of that uh, mediation process. The Taliban say that this time they will rule differently. Do you have any reason to believe that? Uh, no, I don't, Anton, and nobody on the face of the planet has any reason to believe that. Um, I investigated reports while I was in um, Afghanistan these last few months that were coming from places that the Taliban had taken control of. I went to a place in the central highlands, a district called Saigon. When I got there, um, it, the Taliban had been in for four days and they'd been pushed back by the local militias. Um, and I spoke to people who had been... Um, uh, under that regime, if you like, for the four days. And the Taliban demanded lists of the names of women and girls and widows of uh, men, fighting men in the security forces, and told them that they would be married off to their young fighters. Now, this is a form of sex slavery. It's a form of ethnic cleansing, and uh, it's a jihadist war booty approach. And this is this is rolling out. Now, you have um, senior Taliban figures who've turned up in Kabul and earlier this week had a press conference in the government's media and information centre, which until two weeks ago was run by a man called Dawa Khan Manipal. He was murdered 
Friday before last by the Taliban who took responsibility for shooting him as he left Friday prayers. And yet they turn up on the podium saying, it's all going to be fine. It's not fine. People are being hunted down. They're being shot. Um, women are being forced into their homes. Schools are being closed. Even boys' schools, are. Um, the curriculum is being changed so that they only learn uh, to recite the Quran by rote. There's nothing new, probably a lot worse about the Taliban.